Okay, welcome again to the Oxford Discrete Maths and Probability Seminar for our uh, second talk this afternoon. Um, before we get going, let me just remind you that we are uh, recording this. Um, uh, also, if you have questions, you can uh, ask them via the chat. Uh, Christina and I will interrupt the speaker if something needs, if we think something needs asking for clarification during the talk. Otherwise, uh, at the end. Um, so without further ado, uh, let, let's get on. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to have Olivier Bernardi, uh, who's going to talk on percolation on triangles, a bijective path to Louisville quantum gravity. Thank you very much. Um, so I hope you hear me all. Um, so, all right, so this is, uh, this is a, I'm going to, so first of all, I'm, I'm very uh, happy to, um, to, to talk here. Thank you very much, uh, Alex and, and Christina, for this invitation. I'm going to uh, present a joint work with uh, Nina Olden and uh, Chin Sen. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of scary, uh, scary words in the title. So uh, a big part of this talk is going to be able to, to be uh, devoted to just explaining what these different words uh, mean. And um, what I have to say is more or less uh, summarized in, in, this, um, in this drawing here. So, so let me uh, zoom in and uh, focus on what I'm interested in, which is on the left. So on the left, I have uh, two um, kind of objects. So here on top, I have a drawing that is supposed to represent percolation on triangulations. So I'm going to explain uh, what this is and, and why we are interested in knowing more about this, this model. And uh, then on the, on the bottom, I have uh, uh, the conformal loop. This is supposed to represent uh, the conformal loop ensemble on uh, Liouville quantum gravity background. Uh, and okay, I'm, I'm also try, going to try to explain what this is. Um, at, the, at the moment, let me just say these um, are two notions of uh, random curves on a random surface. And the, the goal here uh, is, is to fall. One is to say something about this discrete model and two, to show some, some convergence result from the discrete model to uh, the continuous model. And in order to do that, we will actually uh, take a detour. And uh, this detour is through uh, encoding by certain types of works. So both at the discrete and at the continuous level, there is uh, bijective encoding by works and taking the convergence in the um, world of works, uh, we uh, are going to say something about the convergence of our objects of interest. Okay, so uh, that's the plan. Uh, so let me start uh, at the, the top, uh, top left corner with percolation and triangulations. All right, so um, even I can backtrack even a little bit and uh, talk about percolation on a regular lattice first. So here you have representing the, the, uh, the triangular lattice. And uh, the percolation model that I'm considering here is site percolation, where I color the vertices either black or white uh, with probability one half uh, independently of one another. Okay, so you get this configuration with uh, black and white vertices. And uh, yeah, the probability is one half, meaning I'm, I'm at, at the critical probability. So now uh, this is a very classical uh, object as, as, as you probably know, uh, many interesting questions and, 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 and study of this model. Um, let me review some of the vocabulary and questions we could be interested in. So one first of one first type of question is about uh, crossing uh, events. So uh, let's say you pick, pick a, a, a pieces of your a piece of your uh, lattice here, and uh, you mark some portion of the boundary. And the question is: Is there a path, a black path, a path taking only black vertices that would join these two pieces of the boundary? So you could be interested in this event and knowing their probability. In particular, when you, you take bigger and bigger uh, uh, pieces of your um, triangular on, on, of your lattice, but you, you keep the, the shape fixed 
Okay. Um, a final thing you could be interested in is, is to look at the interface between the different, uh, the, the black and white clusters. Okay. So remember that, you know, when you have um, this percolation configuration, you have the connected component, the white connected components, that's what we call the white clusters, and the black connected component that you call, that we call the, the black clusters. And then you can trace some interfaces between the black and white clusters. Uh, and in, here you can do it in, in a precise way in this triangular lattice. Uh, you, you, you can draw for each bicolor triangle, you can draw a little piece of the interface, okay? And this uh, little uh, red uh, interface here, they are going to, to, form, uh, to form curves. So you will have uh, closed, um, closed curve here. Uh, and in, in also some curves that goes from uh, the boundary bicolor edges to another boundary bicolor edge, okay? So this part. So you would you could be interested in knowing the law of these uh, random curves uh, again in the scaling limit. And another type of questions you could be interested in this model is uh, the mixing properties. So the mixing properties is how f how many uh, sides you need to resample in order to change significantly the macroscopic properties of your configuration. So uh, a precise uh, question could be, for instance what proportion of site you need to resample so that uh, the crossing event before and after the resampling are almost independent. Okay. All right, so this is all very classical. Um, and now what I propose to do is instead of considering this regular lattice to move to a random lattice. So precisely what I'm going to be looking at are triangulations of the disk. So uh, a triangulation of the disk uh, here means just that you uh, decompose your disk, you need your unit disk into your, your disk into triangles, um, okay? And you, you, you can get this type of picture for instance. Okay, so you have interior vertices, exterior vertices, and uh, you only, you, you are, you are only looking at this uh, configuration up to um, the formation, which means here that um, uh, which means that uh, if uh, the, the the you 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 consider a different drawing which is uh, just um, almost the same here, but uh, you have just moved around a little bit the the vet, the, the points, uh, you consider that the same triangulation. Uh, what, what the triangulation record is the adjacency relation between the triangles, okay? So these two are, are the same. And this sort of means that you, for a finite number of triangles or finite number of vertices, you have a finite number of possible triangulations. So it's a discrete model. And for today, uh, we are going to allow multiple edges and, and we are, but we are going to disallow uh, uh, self loops. Okay, so this is just for the details of the model. And uh, also in, in terms of details, I'm going to uh, mark uh, one of the boundary edges and call it the root. So that's, that's going to be indicated by a little arrow like this. And okay, so this is, uh, this is the, the, the model um, of triangulation. So here, <laughs> I have one problem here is that I don't see anyone. Uh, is 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 um, is it clear so far? Okay, so so let me go back uh, and try to um, get at least one video going. And okay, that's that's not working. Sorry. Okay, so sorry for um, sorry for that. I, I want to. Time. Yeah. I have a, a little problem, which is that I would like to uh, get at least one one person in front of me, and I don't see anyone. Which is if you float uh, your uh, mouse towards the top right of the screen. Right. Okay. Here, anyone? here we go. Okay. So I'm I'm back, and I'm going to uh, hopefully be able to. Uh, no, that's 
Okay, so somehow when I enter full screen, I don't see people anymore. I think you could have it like that and it would be fine. Okay. That is easier. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Okay. So let, let me, let me try like that uh, for a while. Cause I, I feel very lonely when there is nobody. All right. Okay. So, so, okay. So this, so this is the, the, the setting I want to consider. So instead, uh, I repeat, instead of taking a regular lattice, I want to take a random triangulation here. So precisely what I want to do is I'm going to fix the size. So I'm going to fix the number of exterior vertices and the number of interior vertices. So now I have a finite number of triangulations and I'm going to pick that triangulation with uniform probability. And on top of that, I'm going to have the site percolation. Okay. Um, and what I want to simply say is that the, the question you can ask in, um, you know, in, in, the, um, in, in, in the regular lattice setting, you can just as well ask them in this random lattice setting as well. So for instance, you, it makes sense to look at crossing events. It can make sense to ask about the properties of the interfaces or the mixing properties and so on. So uh, we would be interested to, uh, to answer, uh, you know, to study this, this quantity in, uh, you know, in the thermodynamical limit when the size goes to infinity. So what we would do uh, in the tip, this topology with the, the number of interior points n would go to infinity and the number of exterior points would be of order square root of n. And we would try to understand what, how this, this, uh, this behaves uh, as n going to infinity. Uh, let me also mention that there is an alternative possibility instead of taking finite size and taking that size going to infinity, you could work directly on an infinite triangular uh, la la lattice. Uh, by taking, uh, the most natural would be to take the uniform model again. So you would be looking at the uniform infinite planar triangulation which is the local limit of uh, triangulation, in the sense that the ball in th in that in inside this infinite random lattice has the, the law, which is the limit of the laws of the balls in uh, big, uh, uh, big triangulations, uniform. Okay, so this is, this is to, to, to say, to, to, this is the model I want to study. Now, um, I'm going to, to answer this silent question, which is why would you uh, change from this classical setting to this, uh, you know, uh, random setting? Um, and, you know, this can be asked more generally if you have, you know, any statistical mechanics models. So it's classical to study it on the regular lattice, but here we, we propose to study it on random lattices. And, you know, there, there are several reasons you want to do that. I mean, the first one is just because it's nice, you, you have very nice um, math sometimes. So that's because the tools are very different and you have very nice uh, tools on the random uh, lattice side. So you could be using random matrices, um, things or uh, techniques or generating function techniques or bijective results. So you have a lot of nice mathematics here and that, that makes the problem interesting and the solution interesting. But uh, a more, uh, compelling argument probably uh, uh, for why we should do that is that uh, in some sense, um, you get the same amount of information on either side. Uh, in the sense that uh, if you want to study uh, the phase transitions of this model, and you would therefore try, be trying say to compute the critical exponents, uh, then uh, you have the kind of the same information on, on both sides in the sense that if you know uh, the critical uh, exponent on one side, there is an explicit exact formula known as the KPZ formula that tells you what's the, the corresponding critical exponent on the, on the regular uh, side. So you can jump from one to the other and uh, the, the, these two settings are, should be considered on an equal footing somehow by this, uh, this Formula. Of course, this formula is, is just a conjecture, but it's a conjecture that is true. So, you know, if you, if you, you should really think of these as, as two, as, as two um, equally important settings. 
And lastly, uh, there is a, a third motivation that uh, is not going to appear very much in this talk because we are looking at the percolation. But in, in, in a more general setting, uh, if you look at the critical, uh, a critical statistical mechanics model, so you will get, you will be sampling your uh, critical, uh, la your, your, your lattice with this model according to this model. So it means that it's going to give some interesting uh, probability measure on the triangulation. Namely, they, they, are going, they are going to appear with weight that is proportional to the partition function. And these weights uh, are very uh, nicely chosen at criticality, and they give rise to interesting scaling limits of uh, these random lattices, these, these random uh, spaces. So let me explain a little bit uh, what is known about the scaling limit at the moment, which is about the uniform case. So um, let me consider a uniform, uh, uniformly random triangulation with N triangle. And I'm going to think of this as a lot of small triangles. So my side length as N is N to the minus one fourth. So uh, you have this type of picture maybe, so you have a random triangulation, but I want to see this not as, as an object and that is embedded in 3D, but simply something that is a metric space. Uh, to, to make it simple, we just consider the set of vertices and we embed them with the graph distance uh, between them. Okay, so this, is, this gives you a random metric space, which is supposed to, to represent the metric space here with, with these triangles more or less. And now um, we want to take the scaling limit as n goes to infinity. And there is this great result of uh, Legal and independently Miramont that says that there is a well-defined uh, limit, uh, limiting metric space, which is called the Brownian map. So uh, the, the theorem is that there is a convergence in law as, met as a metric space in the gromov osdorff topology. And this limit here is a random compact metric space, which is homeomorphic to the sphere, uh, but as a wide metric and as Hausdorff dimension four. Okay. All right, so, so one of the, the other goal here is to say something about this, something new about this, this object. Okay. All right, so that's, that's my motivation for the discrete model. So let me now go to, um, to the, 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 the continuous model. So I want to explain what is this, the, what are these objects, conformal loop ensemble and Louisville quantum gravity. So I'm going to start with Louisville quantum gravity. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to attempt uh, like a five minute uh, presentation of this object. So I'm going to be, of course, on the intuitive side of things, okay? So um, roughly speaking, uh, what you should, no, is that Liouville quantum gravity, LQG, is a random area measure on a C domain. Okay, so uh, this is supposed to be represented by these squares of different size and, and, and color. I'm not going to do, go into the details, but this is supposed to say that you have different density at different places. And this random density is related to the Gaussian free field. Okay, so in order to say more than that, let me uh, go into uh, a definition, but uh, to make it simple, I'm going to start with 1D, 1D uh, Liouville quantum gravity, okay? So 1D Liouville quantum gravity is relatively simple. You consider a, a Brownian motion, say between zero and one, let's call it H. And from that, you cook up a random uh, density on the zero one segment, okay? Namely, you say that your uh, random density, mu, is exponential to the gamma h uh, times the Lebesgue measure, where gamma is just a, a constant here, okay? So, you know, if your, uh, your excursion is, is i, then that's a lot of density, and if it's low, it's a, it's a small density, okay? So you get a random, a random density, and that's 1D LQG, okay? Um, and you could backtrack even a little bit to uh, make it from the, the discrete uh, by uh, giving a, a, 
a discrete uh, approximation for the Brownian motion. So what you would do is consider a random discrete function here uh, from one to n to the real, uh, which starts at zero, say, and uh, which uh, is chosen with probability, probability that is proportional to this exponential minus sum of the difference uh, square over two, okay? So there are two ways to look at this formula here. Uh, one way is to see that it means that the increments are going to be independent Gaussian, and you know it's going to give you the Brownian motion at the scaling limit. The other way to look at it is to, well, more like a, a physicist's point of view, which is you know this this uh, sum of different square of increment square are going to represent the energy of your function, and you take a Boltzmann distribution of your function according to that. Okay. All right, so that's 1D UV quantum gravity. And since we understand 1D uh, well, we can do 2D. So for the 2D, you do exactly the same thing. So that, that this time at the level of discrete function, you take a, a function on the grid and square. And you choose it, ch choose it again with probability, which is proportional to exponential minus uh, the sum of the difference square over two. So here, this, this sum is taken over all pairs of adjacent vertices of your grid. Okay, and then you take the limit of that, okay? Um, that's where the things become a little bit more difficult than in 1D because uh, you want uh, the limiting distribution to be non-trivial. So if you scale it so that this limiting distribution is not trivial, it's not a function. The, the function would, would go from minus, to plus, minus infinity to plus infinity everywhere. So it's not a function, but it's still a, a distribution and it's a nice, interesting distribution and you uh, take this distribution to define a random area measure. So uh, again, same recipe, exponential, mi mi uh, exponential to the gamma times uh, the Gaussian free field um, times the Lebesgue measure. Okay, so of course here, uh, there is a difficulty because H is not a function, it's distribution. So this does not make little sense. You, you need to regularize uh, your Gaussian free field if you want to define it in this way or you could take a different uh, approach from, from the, the continuous directly, okay? But intuitively, that's what this represents, okay? Okay, all right, so that was my, uh, my five minute in introduction to UV quantum gravity. Here, uh, you know, you have this uh, little parameter gamma that controls how wide uh, the, the measure is compared to Lebesgue. And here, gamma is going to be fixed to square root of eight third, which corresponds to pure gravity. All right, so now that I've talked about the random uh, uh, surface, I'm going to talk about the random uh, curl. So I need to, to do a very quick introduction to SLE, Schamlobner evolution. Okay, so again, going to go very fast. So it's, this is just an intuitive presentation. And uh, excuse me if you are more familiar than I am. It's just, just an intuitive, this presentation of this. So, okay, SLA kappa, SLE kappa is, is a random non-crossing parameterized curve in a C domain. So here my C domain is going to be the disk. And uh, the parameter kappa tells you how much of the, how much the, the curve wiggles Okay, and these, these uh, random curves, they were introduced to describe the scaling limits of curves from statistical mechanics. Okay, so scaling limit of interfaces and so on. All right, so let me give you uh, some uh, intuition of how these are defined. So the important things about these curves is that they have these two uh, property. They are conformally invariant they have the conformal invariance property and they have the Markov domain property. So let me explain this on this example where I'm trying to uh, explain the SLE uh, in the disk that goes from this boundary vertex one to the, sorry, boundary point one to the, bon to the internal point uh, zero. Okay, so this is uh, a random curve and I want to tell you what these two, two, two things mean. So let's consider um, you know, let's trace this, this random curve up to a point T. So, okay, this is my point gamma of T. I've, I've traced the blue part, and now I have the, the future, which is the red part. 
And I wonder about, uh, you know, uh, what's the law of this red path? And this property says that um, you can, uh, the, the law of this, this future path is exactly the, the law as the initial curve. So uh, let me make that more precise. So suppose that uh, now you, you, you look at this uh, situation now and you, you cut along uh, the past, the blue, the blue curve the blue part here. So you'll get a, a slit disk and you can conformally uh, map this uh, slit disk to the original disk, okay, in such a way that you, now your, your uh, present uh, position, gamma of t, get mapped to one and, and your, your, uh, your final target is still zero, okay? And you look at uh, the, this, this, the law of this future, and the, what these properties means is that the law of this future is exactly the law of, of the original curve of the SAD, okay? All right, so that's what this means. And I'm kind of claiming that this is a characterization of this curve. So let me explain uh, what I mean by that. Uh, so and for that, I'm going to look at a, a slightly different conformal map. So instead of looking at this conformal map here, uh, I'm going to take the conformal map that uh, fixes uh, not only zero, but the direction around zero. Okay, so if I do that, um, this uh, point, uh, this present point, gamma of t, is going to be mapped uh, somewhere along the boundary, but not at one now. Okay, now because uh, I have these um, invariance properties, what I know is that you know, I can repeat this, this same story uh, several times and the position of my uh, green dot, my present is going to move uh, along the boundary. And what this property says is that uh, these increments around the boundary, this movement are going to have like uh, independent uh, and equally distributed increment. So at the right time scale, time scale I'm going to, to get something that is actually a, a Brownian motion. Okay, so now, the, the, the position here of the present is going to move like uh, a Brownian motion around the, around the, the circle. And, um, and, and uh, this is actually uh, kind of enough to tell you what the curve is by uh, inverting this sequence of conformal map, map uh, fit, fitted here. Okay, so this is the rough idea why these two property uh, characterize, uh, characterize these curves. Okay, so this, this is my, my, um, okay, my, my short uh, uh, introduction to SA. And um, for us, uh, the parameter kappa that uh, determines how much the, the curve wiggles is going to be six. Okay, so the curve is actually not going to look like exactly what I've represented because uh, this curve, it eats itself and the boundary infinitely often. Uh, but uh, this kappa equal to six correspond to percolation. Um, this is a, a famous result uh, of, of Smirnov, which says that um, the interface of percolation on the regular uh, triangular lattice uh, has a scaling limit, which is given by SLE6. Okay, so uh, I'm going to present just a variant, variant of that, uh, that, uh, you know, this would, kind of be uh, like from the boundary to the boundary maybe. So let, let me do a, a version of that, um, that for, for an SLE that is the one that goes from the boundary to, uh, to zero. And for that, uh, you can, uh, what you can do is you take a piece of your triangular lattice and you take also a target, uh, a purple triangle that is going to be your target, okay? And, and you have uh, the, the, your root and you are going to uh, follow a percolation interface uh, until you reach the target triangle. Okay, of course, this, this seems contradictory. I mean, if you follow the, the uh, percolation interface, you are probably going to miss your target ta triangle, right? Uh, because you are going to hit the boundary and maybe go in the wrong direction or hit your past and go in the wrong direction with this rule. So the rule will be, you know, uh, follow the boundary means, um, you know, you turn when you, when you uh, enter a triangle and you see in front of you white, you would turn left. If you see a, a black, you would turn black. Uh, so in, see if you just follow this rule, this would just give you like follow 
the interface of a cluster, but here we want to end up at the target triangle. And here you are just going to, uh, you know, not follow the rules and be uh, naughty sometime. Uh, namely, uh, each time that this would, the rule would make you miss your target. So if you hit the boundary or your past and this would make you miss your target, then you, you don't follow the rule and you go on the side where your target triangle is. Okay, so you look at this, 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 uh, this, this uh, path, that's what you get. Going to go from the root to your target triangle. Now you take a bigger and bigger uh, version of that and you map it conformally to, uh, uh, to your disk, uh, putting your target uh, in the middle and, and your root on, on the side. And, and then the, the, the convergence is going to be two SLCs. And actually more is known, um, there, is this, uh, there is a model for the set of all uh, loops um, around the cluster, says this time that you take a, 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 a monochromatic boundary so that all of your interfaces are loops. Then you have this collection of loops and you look again at the scaling limit of this collection of loops and there is a, a, a diff, an, an object in the in the continuous that de describe that, that is closely related to SLE6, which is called the conformal loop ensemble six, so CLE6, and uh, that you have convergence of this scaling loop. All right, so that's what is, is, is uh, this, what are these two uh, uh, objects? So yeah, you have this uh, LQG, which is a random surface, and you have this uh, random curves. Okay, and there is a, a conjecture that appeared in the 90s about the relation with random lattices and percolation. Okay, well, at least for the triangular part in the 90s. Okay, so, uh, okay, so the, the, the what, what, um, what you need to understand is that, um, okay, this uh, Louis Field quantum gravity, I've represent, I've described it that as, a, you know, a random, um, measure, but you could think of it as a random surface, okay? Uh, what physicists uh, had in mind is that there is this nice notion of random remain surface, and if you map them uh, to the disk, then that would uh, send the density in this, in this wide density, uh, which is the Liouville quantum gravity, okay? So this, this, uh, this model of random Remain surfaces was proposed as a as being maybe uh, some somewhat related to uh, the space time evolution of strings in string theory. Okay, but um, there was another possible uh, model, of course, of random surface that was quite natural, which was to take a random discrete surface and take the scaling limit in the, in the spirit of the Bornean map, maybe. So that gives another natural model of random surface. And there was uh, this strange thing that uh, when physicists uh, computed some quantities on either side, they, they, they always coincided. So they ended up thinking that these two models were actually one and the same. So maybe a precise conjecture is that that would be a nice way to embed your triangulation. Okay, so instead of being that, uh, that abstract uh, metric space, you would uh, act concretely draw your triangulation your, your in, in the disk in a concrete way, maybe circle packing or something like that. And then you would look at the scaling limit of this embedded triangulation. And uh, the conjecture is with that, uh, uh, you know, this scaling limit would be uh, with quantum gravity. Okay. And okay, so this seemed out of reach for many years, but a few years ago, um, uh, Jason Miller and uh, Scott Sheffield proved uh, something very, uh, very important uh, in this domain, which is an equality of metric spaces. So here uh, we forget about the embedding story. We don't know if this works, but the, the, the story is about, uh, okay, on that, on the side of triangulation, there is, a, there is a no limit as metric space. So let's try to, instead of looking for an embedding, let's try to look for a metric space on the LQG side. And so they did that and they, they defined a, 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 a metric, which was a quite non-trivial on the ever. And they showed that these two things at the, at the same low. So uh, 
the so so uh, okay so this is this is a very uh, very impressive uh, result uh, by 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 Miller and Sheffield and probably yeah, unexpected that this would even happen and uh, however this leaves aside the question of the of the embedding um, so here we want to to instead say something about the embedding and and and, and something like that. One, one nice thing about the embedding is that you can do more. Once you have embedded, you can also look at the interfaces. Okay, so for the, for the percolation model on the triangulation, you, are, you get some interfaces, and now you have embedded your triangulation, so this becomes, you know, uh, some, some uh, interface, interfaces in the, in the unit disk. So, um, you, one of the other thing we want to show is that there is a relation between this embedded percolation interfaces and uh, and and the CLE. Okay. All right. So this was a lot of things about motivation, and now I'm ready to tell you about results. Is there is there any question like I should answer so far, Christina or Alex? All good. All right. Okay. So uh, ideally, we want to show that uh, there is a convergence of percolation and random triangulation to uh, this continuous model, CLE on nuclear quantum gravity, under some nice embedding. Uh, unfortunately, we don't exactly that. What we get is that under some ad hoc embedding that we cook up for the proof. Okay, so let me uh, say precisely. So we consider a uniformly random percolated triangulation of size n, meaning I have n interior vertices and square root of n exterior vertices. Uh, so this is my triangulation and this is my, sigma n is my percolation on it, okay? And the result is that there exist embeddings, uh, phi n, that uh, allows to embed this triangulation in a disk and complain between the different n such that the following uh, converge jointly in probability. So first, um, the area measure. So if you look at the counting measure of vertices here, uh, properly normalized, this is going to, um, to, to, to converge in the weak topology to uh, this LQG measure. Okay, so this is the first uh, observable. Second observable are the percolation cycles. So you look at the uh, percolation cycles on the triangulation and somehow you need to order them. And you, you have more and more of these percolation uh, interfaces. Um, and you, let's say at size N, you can order them according to their size, their area, say. And then uh, you can do the same in the, in the um, in, in, the, uh, in the continuous setting. So for the continuous setting, you take a UV quantum gravity and you take an independent um, um, CLE6, and then you order the, the loops of the CLE6 according to the quantum area they, 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 they uh, uh, enclose. So that gives you an order in gamma one, gamma two. And the, these uh, percolation cycles converge, these embedded percolation cycles Converge to these uh, to these percolation cycles. All right, and third, and you have um, another way to look at this percolation cycle, which is in terms of the exploration tree, which is you know uh, I've talked late before about this uh, path, this percolation path that have a, a, a target triangle. So if you draw all of them at the same time, you'll get a a, a, a tree, a spanning tree of the dual, which is a, a, a different such tree. And this uh, spanning tree of the dual, it's going to converge uh, to um, the branch, the so-called branching SCD6, which is this uh, uh, also like this collection of curves that uh, join in a tree-like fashion uh, and uh, for which each branch is a SCD6. Okay. And then there is the, maybe the finest uh, um, 
quantity here, which is about the, the mixing properties. So for the mixing property, we look at pivotal measures. So for the triangulation, we would, we would be looking at sites in the triangulation such that if you flip the color, uh, say switch from this one from white to, to black, this would merge or uh, split big cycle, epsilon big cycles. Okay, so you have uh, these special points for a given epsilon. Uh, so you can uh, order them according to which like self intersections and uh, you know, in, so for a given a loop or uh, uh, pivotal points for two loops, gamma i, gamma j. And you can look then at uh, the, the measure that they, uh, that they, 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 um, they, they give at the limit and they give the limit, they, they give a measure that is uh, the continuous an analog that you would define in terms of CLE6, uh, measured uh, by LQG. Okay. And uh, okay, so that, that's the main result. There is one more, uh, which is about these crossing events, which is that uh, for a random uh, vertex Vn and say uh, this, you take a, a limiting uh, point V, and you look at the crossing, uh, the, the crossing event, which is, okay, so first, so sh should I say, I should have said, so you first fix three uh, ex exterior vertices, red, blue, and yellow. And then you, uh, you look at this random uh, purple vertex and you look at the priority that there is a, a black path in the percolation that separate blue and, and purple from the two others. And this uh, converts to the uh, corresponding event that is defined in terms of CLE and CLE, okay? Okay, so, um, all right. So these are the, the, the results uh, that we obtain. Uh, the, the nice, the, the thing that is not explicit is what are these embeddings we do? And uh, let me explain how it works by looking at a little bit at the proof. So in the proof, uh, we cannot, we don't, don't prove these things directly at all. Uh, what we do instead is, as, as, I've, as I have hinted at the beginning, we are going to use some bijections. So at the discrete level, there is a bijection with some kind of discrete path that I'm going to describe uh, later. Um, and at the continuous level, there is a, a, a measure of preserving correspondence with uh, certain uh, the formation of the Brownian motion, Brownian excursion. So, okay. Uh, so this, this one is, is a bijection that uh, I originally found in my thesis, but that was presented in a different way. And we have extended it and reformulated here for the purpose of this article. And the, the one we use at the, um, at the continuous level is a result of Duplanty, Miller and Sheffield which is known as the mating of tree uh, construction for this particular parameter of uh, pure gravity. So, um, okay, so uh, what we do is uh, we encode the informal, the, the, this, this percolation, percolated triangulation by these walks, this is a bijection, and we uh, explain what, uh, what are the observable uh, that we are interested in here, percolation and so on, in terms of this path. Okay, and then um, you, we take the convergence of this work and all of this observable to, uh, to the, the corresponding Brownian path. So here we can uh, couple everything so that uh, you have an almost sure convergence of the path and the observable. So then uh, what we do is we cheat a little, we cheat in the following sense, we take this, um, this, this almost sure limit and we create the corresponding uh, continuum object. Okay, by the, the meeting of three correspondence. And then that's, now we have this, this, this coupled sequence. And now to embed this coupled sequence, what we do is we define a, um, space feeding exploration at this, at the discrete level and a space limit, a space uh, feeding exploration at the continuous level and we map one to the other. So when we do that, uh, we show that everything we said before uh, aligns well. 
uh, the area measure, the percolation interfaces, the, the mixing property, uh, the mixing uh, measure, and so on. So this is our result. Okay, so our embedding VN are, 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 are using a full sequence, you know, of, of uh, coupled uh, percolated triangulations. Okay. All right. So now that um, I have said uh, the result and, and, and the, the general uh, strategy, uh, let me uh, spend most of my time with uh, the bijection itself. Okay, so uh, the bijection here is between percolated triangulation and, and some kind of lattice walks, namely uh, the so-called crevasse walks in Z2, so which are the walks that use three types of steps. A, that's uh, to go right, B, to go up, and C, to go down left, okay? All right, so you here you have a, a crevasse walk here in Z2. And the, there is a bijection between this set of crevasse walks starting and ending at zero and remaining in the first quadrant. And the set of percolated triangulation uh, of the disk Except here, this is a, a disk with very few outside vertices. I have just one white and one black vertex uh, and the, the root in, in, in this manner. This is a bijection. The bijection, let me uh, define this bijection on an example to give you the flavor. Okay, so let's say I, I want to uh, associate to this lattice work a percolated triangulation. Okay, so my work here that I've drawn is, uh, is doing this, this thing. It's uh, the set of steps B, A, A, B, B, C, A, C, C, okay? And the bijection is going to work step by step. So each step of the, uh, of the work is give you, give you a, an instruction to grow your uh, triangulation, okay? So you start with a triangulation which is just made of the root, and then at each, uh, at each uh, later of your work, step of your work, you kind of grow uh, the triangulation and you, you end up with this one. Okay, so let me uh, give you the rules uh, for, you know, what you should do when you see a B step or an A step or a C step, okay? So the, the A step and B steps are very, uh, very simple. Uh, so let me tell you what, how they work. Okay, so at, a, at any given time of your uh, bijection, you, you are growing uh, a triangulation of the disk. So, but this triangulation has a very simple boundary condition. So you have your uh, root here at the bottom from white to black, and then you have uh, on the left a bunch of, of white vertices and on the right a bunch of black vertices. So that's your coloring condition in the boundary. So you have this extra bicolor edge that I will call the top edge. And if you uh, are reading an, an A step from the work, uh, you are going to grow your map by adding a triangle uh, on the top edge. You just put add this uh, additional triangle and the, uh, new the new vertex is going to be white if it's an A or black if it's a B, okay? All right, so let's start here. We start with this, the, we apply B step. So that means I'm going to create this triangle with a black vertex. Uh, and then I have an A step. So I create this triangle with an, a, a white, uh, vertex and so on, okay? Pretty simple so far. And then, okay, so I have completed this part and now I, I will, next one, I'm going to have to complete a C step. So that's the, where the definition is a little bit more complicated. So let me explain what you do for a C step. So you have cons constructed your triangulation so far and you need to apply your C step. The C step is going to uh, glue this top edge on either the left side or the right side, okay? You need to decide which one. And this is going to be gov governed by uh, what you have already. So you look at, in order to know if you need to glue it on the left side or on the right side, you are going to look at the percolation interface that start at the root. So this percolation interface is going to, you know, go through your triangulation and end at the top vertex. But um, because of the, the way this bijection is defined, this percolation interface is as an additional property, which is it visits all of the triangles that are incident to boundary edges. So in particular, 
I can look at this left, the last uh, left triangle and the last right triangle here. And I'm going to look at which one was visited first. So in, my, in this example, uh, I have visited the left, uh, the, the top left triangle before the top right triangle along this percolation path. That tells me I need to glue on the left. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm identifying these two edges and I'm getting this, this map. Okay, and uh, in the meantime, this, uh, this vertex become white when I identify it with this one, okay? So let's do it here. Also, I'm looking at the percolation interface and I'm comparing this triangle to this triangle. This one was visited first, so that tells me I'm, I need to glue it to this one. So I glue to this one, I'm getting this configuration. So then I have an A step, okay, so that's, that's nice. Let's put this new triangle. And then I have a C step again. So again, I'm going to look at the percolation interface and I look if it could visit this one or that, that triangle or that triangle first. And visit that triangle first. So that means I'm going to glue on that side. So that's which is what I do. And I get this map. I need to do a C again. So I go look again at the percolation interface and I need to compare this triangle to that triangle. This one was compared, was visited first. So I glue on that side and I get this. All right, so that's the definition of the bijection. And the claim is that this is a bijection between these two sets of objects. Um, crevasse works that stay in the first quadrant and, and this, uh, this type of tri percolated triangulation. So this uh, version of the bijection is actually kind of the spherical uh, topology in the sense that you don't really have a, a long boundary. Uh, you could actually close this boundary and get the sphere. So this is the spherical case that I've described now. Uh, but there is also uh, the disk case that is slightly more involved. And, and then uh, you can also uh, do it in directly in the infinite setting, uh, the uniform infinite planar triangulation, uh, the UIPT <laughs> setting. And uh, for that, you would get a measure preserving correspondence with the uniform uh, set of crevasse path. Okay. Um, all right. So you have this version. The nice thing about the infinite version is that uh, the low of the path is the simplest. Um, and so uh, our proof starts there, and then it prove uh, prove prove the the other one by con condition. But the, the bijection goes in the other direction, kind of. All right, and this bijection is, is good because, you know, you, you have this a priori a complicated object and now you encode it by somewhat simpler objects, which are just lattice paths. It's better to take a, a scaling limit and so on. Uh, but what you want to be able to is to encode all of the observable you want in terms of this path. So we have an extensive uh, dictionary to do that you know, that translate what is an edge in terms of the steps and so on. And let me first give you, uh, let me just give you an illustration of one of the item in this dictionary. So let's say the, the percolation interface in terms of, uh, of, the, of the path. So, uh, okay, so this is uh, at the top my bijection. And now I'm interested in this observable, which is this percolation path from the, the, the root to uh, the top edge. I want to extract that from, uh, I want to, 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 to see what kind of observable it is on this path. And the, the result is that, um, okay, so here you, you forget everything except the path. You just want this path and how it, it, uh, it uh, in self intersect. So you would have like um, something that is, uh, you empty all of the bubble and you would have something that is a shuffle of two log trees. Okay, so I'm not going to describe more than that. At, on, at the level of pass, what you need to do is you need to remove all of the sub excursion of your path. So each time that you have a sub excursion like so, or like so, you just delete it from your path and you replace it just by one big step. So you get uh, a simplified path here. And the claim is that this is a bijective encoding of this simplified map. Okay. So this is the kind of things we do in the dictionary. And, uh, 
very nicely, uh, this, the same happens at the continuous level. So we have these two set of dictionary at the discrete level and at the continuous level with the miraculous property that these, you know, this dictionary coincide, right? So in, in, in a very natural way. So this is, uh, you know, what makes it work, you know, this, this fact that you have these two uh, correspondents that are, you know, the discrete analog of one, one is the discrete analog of the other. So this is very nice. Um, all right, so this is, uh, this is for, uh, for what uh, we have done together with uh, Nina and Axin. They, so, so I think I have three minutes left. So I, l let, me, let me tell you, uh, what uh, they they went on to do, which is uh, even better. Uh, so what they wanted to strengthen uh, significantly this convergent result, because um, what they were able to 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 show is that this convergence result um, that I have presented, this this list of uh, convergence of observable, is uh, true under a nice embedding that is you know, not ad hoc, uh, but really uh, properly defined. So let me tell you which, uh, which embedding it is. Uh, so they call it the Cardi embedding. And the way it's defined is as follows. So you fix, uh, you want to embed your, triang your uh, triangulated percolation, sorry, your percolated triangulation in the triangle. Okay, so you have this unique triangle and you want to uh, s uh, say how to embed uh, this triangulation in this triangle. So you start by um, setting three boundary vertices, fix the, the red, blue, and yellow vertices at, at, the, at the extremity of your triangle. And then you need to uh, embed uh, all the other uh, vertices of your triangulation. So say you want to know where to place this purple vertex. In order to know where to place this purple vertex, is, vertex, you are going to look at three probabilities, P blue, P, blue, P uh, yellow, and P red, which are defined as follows. Let's say you want to look at P blue. The P blue would be the probability that in this triangulation, uh, when you look at the percolation model, there is a, a black path that separates purple and blue from the two others. Okay, so that's one number you get for uh, this. You get these three number for your, uh, for, for this vertex, purple vertex of your triangulation. And these three numbers, uh, you know, if you take a large triangulation, this is close to, to the, they sum to, to approximately one in general. So you just normalize that to one and you use these, these numbers to, uh, to as the barycentric coordinate of your point, okay? And that's place your vertex. You do that for every vertex, that's your embedding. And what they show is that the convergence result that I presented earlier, it holds for this Cardi embedding. And the reason it, 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 it holds is that this ad hoc embedding we used, Pn, is actually close to the Cardi embedding in the limit, okay? So this is the, the hard thing to, to show here. And um, the, the key ingredient to prove that is actually um, this, this property that you can uh, do a little bit more. So somehow you want to separate the, the surface, the random surface from the random curves. So, uh, and say that this convergence is kind of component wise. So in the sense that if you take the same random triangulation and k independent percolation configuration, you get to, um, so you, you would get, you know, k different path. You take the limit, you get k Brownian motion, but if you um, take the, the, bijection, the bijection back, what you get is the same uh, UV quantum gravity background and k independent CLE configuration. Okay, so this shows that this thing is component, the convergence is component wise in some sense. And this component wise property shows that actually um, the, you can upgrade the crossing event result from an annealed result to a quench result where you fix the, you first fix the triangulation and then look at, uh, you know, uh, percolation on that. And this, you know, this, uh, this quench result then shows uh, that 
um, Fien behaves like the cardio embedding, which is the one that, that would work for regular lattice. And uh, this is proved by uh, taking a lot of uh, different ingredients. One of them is, is this result by Jason Miller and, and Sheffield earlier, uh, and, and, and a lot of things that have been proved in the past decade. Um, because you need to, to, show, to, to show that the, the Rubik quantum gravity stay the same. And for that, you need to uh, uh, improve uh, the topology of convergence quite significantly. And also, you need to prove that the CLE are independent. And that for that, you have some mixing property that are involved that use this pivotal, this mixing result that we obtained. OK, so these are the two uh, ingredients. Uh, for what I think is a, a really uh, a very impressive uh, conclusion. And I'm going to stop here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we have time for some questions. Um, uh, so if people would please ask them in the, uh, in the chat and then I'll, I'll unmute people. Uh, maybe I'll start with one myself, which is, um, so when you're setting up these uh, random triangulations, you had n vertices in total and square root n around mm -hmm. the boundary. Yeah. Um, how, how sensitive is that to the, to the root n? I mean, if, if you say, so is it sensitive at all to taking 100 root n or yeah, some no, you could, larger power yeah, of n? Yeah, so you can take, yeah. yeah, good question. So yes, you, you, could, you could take any constant, beta square root of n, and then uh, for the UV, so when you when you uh, do the the UV quantum gravity, you can you can fix that um, boundary measure compared to the, uh, uh, the the internal measure. So so yeah, so you it doesn't. You, I mean, you, you just need to fix a constant, and and then uh, you have the result. And if you re replace root n by n to the half plus epsilon, say, or just some slightly larger power, does that? Yeah, that wouldn't really work. I mean, that wouldn't really uh, give the, 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 the right topology. I mean, the, the, um, the triangulation wants to have, the triangulation of the, of, of, of the disk wants to have of order square root of n yeah. uh, vertices on the boundary. You know, if you take a, a random one and don't fix how many you want, uh, yeah, you would have a square root of n uh, yeah. order, and if you don't do that, then that's that's a different topology, and you would have to to uh, kind of, uh, I guess I don't know, but I guess uh, um, you know uh, consider um, a degenerate version of UV quantum gravity in some sense, and I don't know that. I mean, we do, we certainly don't have this this result uh, in our paper, but. Uh, it's not clear exactly how you would define the, the continuous object either. I mean, already like uh, this this object we, we define actually it's better to 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 define them the continuum object is it's better to define them in in the in the full uh, the full plane, and 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 only then uh, do some uh, um, uh, some. Um, 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 sorry, you, you, you only then can construct uh, the appropriate model for uh, the other topology, the disk topology and, and, and the spher spherical topology. I see. Okay, thank you. Um, th there are a number of questions, so I'll try to unmute people in turn. So, uh, first of all, uh, Gregory. Yeah, well, Sheen answered this question, in fact. Uh, yeah, I was asking if you can get some uh, kind of, you know, uniform regularity for these embeddings phi n. Uh, so in, this, in, the, in the sense of being sure that the, the edges are not too big or something so like something that? Something like that, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, yes, so, so, so indeed. Uh, we, I mean, in the paper, we don't prove so much about the embedding, but we do prove this type of things that you know the the, the you know the size of the edges they go to to, to zero actually you know uh, they, they go to zero I mean that's that's in, in later work by by Nina and Sin they they can show more like that they they, they actually go to zero in the right in, at, at the right speed okay yeah, yeah thanks okay and uh, uh, next Nigel 
Uh, hello. I, I wasn't clear what the uh, Black Perth was in uh, Cardi Embedding. Yeah, so, well, so, um, so what I mean by that is uh, take, uh, uh, when you f take this speculation uh, model here, and you, the question is whether there is a path of black vertices uh, in there. So this, this, this is an event that depends on your percolation uh, configuration, and there's a certain probability, uh, which is what I indicated by P blue. Is that, is that, does it answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, we had a, a question from uh, Laurent. Oh yes, I but uh, I think I'm wrong. But um, no, I was thinking maybe if you if you have some metric information with your bijection, you could uh, uh, build a metric on the LQG surface. But uh, I don't think you have that information in the bijection. Yeah, no. You, so so we don't control the distance well in that bijection. So um, yeah, so this this is a type of bijection, you know, uh, which is quite different the one from, sh you know, the chauffeur or, or uh, the boutique guitar, uh, the differentiated guitar uh, bijection. Uh, so in this, in this uh, bijection, the, the distance is not easily uh, observable in, 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 the, in the path. Yeah, so yeah. we don't have a good control of that. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Baptiste, did you have a question or has it been answered? Baptiste? Ah, okay. Uh, Baptiste's mic isn't, isn't, isn't working. Uh, let, let's... Uh, okay, Peter? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Yes, Olivier, uh, lovely stuff. Um, I Thank have you. A, a comment and a question that goes with it. Mm -hmm. When you listed the reasons for looking at percolation in a random environment as opposed to a lattice, um, you gave three good reasons, and but there, there's a fourth that actually occurred to me first, which is uh, that when you do it uh, in a random environment, you get for free invariance under under um, isometries of the plane. Now, it's true that you do get isometries of the plane for the uh, particular lattice you used as your example um, as a result of work of Smirnoff and so forth, but it's, it's hardly obvious and it's not known for other lattices. Um, and, uh, but it also occurred to me that there is another um, well-studied uh, random environment model, which seems similar to your, your triangulations, which is Voronoi percolation. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know whether that behaves the same as uh, uh, percolated triangulations in the limit? Or? So, I mean, so, it's, um, you know, for, for, for Voronoi, I, I I guess you, you already need to, to start with something that is embedded in the plane. And, and then you have to say where you place your, your points, right? So- well, say by Poisson distribution, say. Well, okay, so then, then, then you know, the, the, the thing is that you are going to get the uniform distribution uh, of, of, I mean, the measure, you know, is, is, is going to be uh, uniform for your, whatever, your, your vertices or, or whatever. So you could do something else. You, you, you could force it to converge to your quantum gravity by picking your point, you know, according so to, you, you fix your kind of, you, you, you kind of cheat. You, you, you start by, by fixing an LQG and then you, you sample your point according to that and, mm -hmm. and look at the Voronoi. 
Um, so if you if you do that, you you get the the limiting distribution, you know, the the limiting area measure for free. But you could still look at uh, you know the percolation interfaces, and it makes sense to look at these. Um, I so I don't I don't think that's known. Um, maybe maybe Xin would know if there is some more recent development, but I don't think this is known. Uh, I mean, somehow I think that from from physics point of view, I, I guess that you know the the uniform distribution is is more na more natural, I think, and and uh, then you are left with this question of how to embed it. Okay, thank you. Okay, we also had a, a question from Luigi Adario Berry uh, in the chat, uh, but Luigi had to run for a meeting, um, so let me read it out. So he says. Uh, uh, it looks like it might be sort of natural to think of the C steps as being along the Z axis, turning the walk into a three dimensional path. Is that perspective of any use? Um, so I don't, I don't really uh, think that's um, going to be good point of view. I mean, the one, one thing to understand is that uh, the, the coordinates um, in the code, in, in the dictionary, the coordinates have a, have, have a role to play. They, they encode the, okay, let me go to, you know, um, let's see. Yeah, so, so the coordinates of the work, they, they, they encode the boundary of the, of the you know, of the, uh, of the sites, okay, of, of the, the, the boundaries. Um, in the, and, and also if you move to 3D, you kind of lose this condition of staying in the first quadrant or, or, or this notion of execution and so on. Um, what is true is that uh, this work would be more naturally embedded in the triangular uh, lattice instead of the square lattice here. I mean, this is re really a work in, in, in the third plane with, uh, with these steps. And, and the, the, the continuous limit is, is um, you know, is, is a bonding motion in the third plane, not in the quarter plane. Okay, so I'm cheating a little bit in order to get the, the triangle like this, this axis to mean something. Um, now, uh, going to uh, more dimension, what would be really nice is, is instead to uh, get some model of, uh, you know, not 2D triangulation, but 3D triangulations. So if uh, anyone has some ideas about that, that would certainly be of extreme interest. Okay, I think we've, we've, we've uh had everyone's questions. Um, so I'll pause the recording in a minute or stop the recording in a minute um, and invite people to applaud. But uh, first, let me thank Olivia for a, for a beautiful talk. Um, so I'll now, I'll, I'll 